that you uh, give us an ear to hear, eyes to see, Father God, that we hear you and what you have with clarity, Lord, through your Holy Spirit for each and every single one of us, Lord, on a personal level. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and in Jesus' name, Lord, mm -hmm. I pray that it's all of you and none of me. In Jesus' name. Yeah. So we're uh, reading from um, Exodus 10. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Return to Pharaoh and make your demands again. I have made him and his officials stubborn, so I can display my miraculous signs amongst them. I've also done it so you can tell your children and grandchildren about how I made a mockery of the Egyptians mm -hmm. and about the signs I displayed among them. And so, and so you will know that I am the Lord. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, this is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says, how long will you refuse to submit to me? Let my people go so they can worship me. If you refuse, watch out, for tomorrow I will bring a swarm of locusts on your country. They will cover the land so that you won't be able to see the ground. Oof, Jesus. They will devour what little is left of your crops after the hailstorm, including all the trees growing in the fields. They will overturn your places, your palaces, sorry. They will overturn your palaces and the homes of your officials and all the houses in Egypt. Never in history, never in the history of Egypt have your ancestors seen a plague like this one. And with that, Moses turned and left Pharaoh. Pharaoh's officials now came to Pharaoh and appealed to him. How long will you let this man hold us hostage? Let the men go to worship the Lord their God. Don't you realize that Egypt lies in ruins? So Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh. All right, he told them, go and worship the Lord your God. But who exactly will be going with you? Moses replied, we will all go young and old, our sons and daughters, and our flocks and herds. We must all join together in celebration, in, in celebrating a festival of the Lord. Pharaoh retorted, the Lord will certainly need to be with you if I let you take your little ones. I can see through your evil plan, never. Only the men may go with may go and worship the Lord since that is what you requested and Pharaoh threw them out of the palace then the Lord said to Moses raise your hand over the land of Egypt to bring on the locusts let them cover the land and devour every plant that survived the hailstorm so Moses raised his staff over Egypt and the Lord caused the east wind to blow over the land and they they so Moses raised his staff over Egypt, and the Lord caused the east wind to blow over the land, and that day and through the night. Then when the morning arrived, the east wind had brought the locusts, and the locusts swarmed over the whole land of Egypt, settling in dense swarms from the end of the country to the other. It was the worst locust plague in Egyptian history, and there, was, there has never been another like it. For the locusts covered the whole country and darkened the land. They devoured every plant in the field and all the fruit on the trees and had survived that had survived the hailstorm. Not a single leaf was left on the trees and plants throughout the land of Egypt. Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron. I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you, he confessed. Forgive my sin just this once and plead with the Lord your God to take away this death from me. So Moses left Pharaoh's court and pleaded with the Lord. And the Lord responded by shifting the wind and the strong west wind blew the locusts into the Red Sea. Not a single locust remained in all the land of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart again, so he refused to let the people go. The, a plague of darkness. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, lift your hand to the, toward the heaven, and the land of Egypt will be covered with a darkness so thick that you can feel it. So Moses lifted his hand to the sky, and a deep darkness covered the entire land of Egypt for three days. During all that time, people could not see each other. No one moved, but there was light as usual where the people of Israel lived. Finally, Pharaoh called for Moses. Go and worship the Lord, he said, but leave your flocks and herds here. You may even take your little ones with you. No, Moses said, you must provide us with animals for sacrifices and burnt offerings mm -hmm. to the Lord our God. All our livestock must go with us too. Not a hoof can be left behind. We must choose our sacrifices for the Lord our God from among these animals. And we don't know how we are to worship the Lord until we get there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart once more, and he would not let them go. Get out of here, Pharaoh shouted to Moses. I'm warning you, never come back to see me again. The day you see my face, you will die. Very well, Moses replied. I will never see your face again. That's deep. That's deep. Um, wow. Come on. So, yes. <laughs> Um, there was just so many things that I just felt popping out, man, God, 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 God is so good because although through, how many know that right now the world is looking really dark, Yes. really dark. And we can learn something great from the example that Moses is giving here, regardless of how much darkness is going on and how much evil, because we all have some sort of evil near us for one reason or another. Something is attacking us. The enemy is trying to get something um, close to us to distract us and whatnot. And through the whole thing, it just amazes me how Moses is still so kind at heart, still just obedient to God, only to what God says, mm -hmm. only obedient. His obedience is just so, to me, it's so humbling, his mm -hmm. obedience. And not just his obedience, but also he's there. And although, you know, in the flesh, what would we do most of the time? God, take him out. God, just get rid of him. God, already punish him or something, right? But every time Pharaoh pleads to him, it's like there's this hope of salvation that he has for Pharaoh and those in darkness yes. and those that are with him, that he's still pleading to God for them, no matter how many times yes. Pharaoh is lying. And and it's a, it, it, to me, it just spoke of like, no matter how much we see people bound, people in darkness, we need to continue because we need to remember that the darkness doesn't come from God. That a lot of the times, yes, it's our choices. So then we need to pray for people's choices because they're stuck in Egypt still, right? Those are still things that are happening today. And the way that God is just um, taking control of, of the whole situation of Moses speaking to him. And Moses is just, an, he's, he's in obedience. There's nothing distracting him. He's just very willfully just going. He delivers a message. He does exactly what God is saying. Not more, not less. He doesn't put, he doesn't take away. And that's something that we all need to remember. It ministers to me that we need to learn to listen to God first, be in his presence in all the darkness and all the chaos and whatever we are going through, especially as women, because we as women, we hear a lot. You know, we're dealing with children, we're dealing with husbands, we're dealing with family. There's just so many things that are going around us that sometimes if you allow yourself you'll be consumed by the darkness but if you go before the presence of god the way moses would um and and listen to what he the instructions that he's giving you regardless Amen. and lift up every situation in prayer then god will continue to work and he will continue to move and there's a this part of um Amen. Yeah, thank you there's this part that just really where, where he says, um, you know, God's people, Egypt is going through all this darkness at the same time. And all of Pharaoh's people, because, you know, all of this wickedness and all of this evilness and all of these things. But God's people are taken care of. They're in the light. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
And and that really ministered to me for a time that we're living in now, in the days that we're living in now. That no matter how dark it is, when we have the Lord, but the difference is, um, back then it was literal light, right? But to us, it's spiritual. It's the Holy Spirit inside of us, of the Holy Spirit filling us up, filling us with His light, um, and it speaks multitudes. It's just it's. it's if we allow ourselves to be that light in the dark place, no matter if it's in our home, if it's in our workplace, if That's it's right. in our city, if it's wherever we are and whatever we are going through, no matter how dark, our focus has to be 100% in God Amen. so that we are that light. No matter how difficult Come it on. is, God hears good. your prayer. He hears your words. He yes. hears your faith. I mean, he was listening to Moses. We are no greater than Moses. Mm-hmm. You know, the word of God says that God uses the foolish things of this world. Mm-hmm. And how many have been Thank foolish? Thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. I'm like, double hands, because that was very <laughs> foolish. <laughs> Praise God. But he will still use us. He hears our prayer, even if it's a whisper. I mean, sometimes we don't even have to say the prayer because God knows our heart. He knows the pain in our soul sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. But it's just it's connecting with God. It's so important to connect with him and remember that if his word said if he did it at one time Mm -hmm. and once he delivered us from Egypt, then we need to remember that although we see all this darkness, we are not to go back into Egypt and stay there. Come on. Because that's the difficult things, whether it's in relationships, family, or things, or even culture, right? Because mm-hmm. the same relationships, I know, there's a time where, you know, my spouse at one time, you know, he was on drugs, the Lord delivered me, and although God would call me to pray for him, I couldn't get stuck there, right? And so, in that, let's, let's take that as an example, or let's say even culture, the things that we grew up knowing or believing, the things going on right now, okay, sometimes we participated, but God delivered us from that. So when we get in, invited to a party, it has to be with God's purpose, going back into Egypt with God's purpose yes. of deliverance, of prayer, yes. of only being used, only what God speaks to Amen. us, right? The importance of that, not getting stuck there. And in the things that we see, even something as simple as gossiping, yes. because our tongue has so much power that sometimes we can get so lost. There's a difference when you speak with concern for someone, you lift it in prayer, you know that prayer is being directed in that way. That's different than when the tongue is being used to destroy someone. Amen. Right? Amen. And so when we hear something, you know, we also, we, we serve a God who listens to everything. Yes. He's everywhere. So we can't participate in that form of Yes, amen. Right? And so that's in in the different ways that God was just really speaking to me that he's not, he doesn't, he he doesn't hate Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. He really, but but in here it speaks to me that he is punishing the wicked. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because Pharaoh is wicked. Yes. His heart is hardened. And but it's coming from a wicked dark place, mm-hmm. and so he's dealing with that because he's trying to break them down. And sometimes we need to be broken down in the presence of God mm-hmm. because sometimes we forget so much. But it's not because God hates us, it's not because we're so wicked we can't find uh, we can't be delivered or freed from it. It's because God wants to save us before we hit that dark place where Pharaoh was at, mm-hmm. where he had his heart hardened, where he was so bitter, so angry so full of rage where he just didn't want to have it yet. He wanted his own way in that stubbornness because his heart was stubborn, right? And so, um, praise God. I just, I get so excited because above all, what really um, speaks out to me is, but there was light as usual where the people of Israel lived. Amen. So there is a light inside of us, mm-hmm. right? There's a light inside of us and we need to keep that filled. We need to keep it fueled. We need to be in the presence of amen, God. His amen. holy oil continuing to pouring yes, into us. Jesus. And how is that going to happen unless we meet God in that secret place where we can break down, where we can be ourselves, amen. where we can um, tell him anything. The darkest thing is that we might not even tell our best friend or our spouse, right? Family member. All of it. And so just to remember that no matter how dark it looks around us, whether it's in the circle of our family, whether it's in our city, God always wins. God is always the answer. God is the light. You know, now we have Jesus. But this right here, man, it just really, really spoke to my spirit. 
in all of it. You know, let's not be like Pharaoh, stubborn, hard. We can't deal with the things of this world without God because we are not of this world. Amen. We do not belong to it. Come on. We are rejected. That's from right. His That's we right. We are rejected from it because yep. we are not from here. Yep. We don't belong for it. Yes. We don't belong here. We are not to conform to this world. Yes. We are not to um, participate in it. We have been set apart and that actually means something. Yes. It means God can use us. God will use us if we allow him to because we have free will. Right? Yes. We have free will. So in all of this dark place and everything, man, God is just, a, I'm going to continue saying it. God is beautiful. God is Amen. amazing. God is just really, once again, about to show up yes. and do something because he is not done. He is Amen. not done. Amen. He did it for Thank them. You, Lord. He did it for Israel. Thank for the you, Israelites. Jesus. He's doing yes, it for us. Lord. He Thank is telling much. us right now. He is telling us today, woman of God, I am with you. Yes. Woman of God, God, no matter God, how dark it is, you know, no matter how you difficult you it is, no matter how you much you think your children are not listening, your spouse is not listening, your family is not listening, it doesn't matter. They belong to God. Yes, Leave them to Lord God. God is who created them. Yes, God is going to take care of them. You do what God has called you to do and focus on what God is speaking to you, what God is calling you, listen to that, focus on that, don't lose track of that, God is saying, I love you, you're my daughter, there is no one, no one that can take your place, no one that can do what I, do what I have called you to do. Because we are one body. Yes. You are important. Yes. There is something that you bring to the table that no one else can. No one else. The devil has tried to break you like Pharaoh was trying to break everyone out in Egypt. You know, like he was trying to break the Israelites time and time and time again. And although the Israelites didn't understand, why are we in so much darkness? Why will Moses basically, why will Moses just be quiet already? Because he's causing so much trouble, right? Mm -hmm. There's just so much going on. This locusts and all these things, right? All this darkness. But you know what? At the same time, that's the things that we are going through. God is saying it is it is time for you to remember that I am with you. Yes. I am bringing you, you. You have the light. You are the light. Yes. Focus on where the light is. Focus in that intimate place. Focus on what God is telling you, what he is saying. Yes. Never mind everything else. Because what the devil meant for evil, God is using for good. Amen. And that is Amen. something that will continue, continue, Amen. continue. Because God is a God of completion. God never fails. And the devil himself has to report to God. So the devil himself has no power over what God is doing in your yes, life. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are living in days where we need to understand that Jesus lives inside of us. He is in us and we are in him. And that carries weight to it. That means something. It means that we we are chosen. We are loved. We are cared for. Mm -hmm. God loves us. We are not alone. We are mm -hmm. not alone. I mean, you look at this place and it just lights up because you feel the glory of God. Yes. You feel his presence. Yes. Right? Because you know that where God is welcome, God is going to be mm -hmm. there. Amen. And as the Israelites held together, we need to do the same thing. Amen. And all we do Especially as women, we need to be open about what one is going through, another one is going through. Not to be nosy, to be the sisterhood, you know, to be the church. We are called to be one body. And it's time to honor each other as part of that body of Christ. No one is more, no one is less. God loves us all, and he has called us all to different places. Yes. You don't need to have a title. All you need to know who you are in the Lord. Amen. Know that he loves you. He's called you. He's chosen you. He's anointed you. He will prepare you. Just like he did to Moses. Moses, I, I could imagine him being uh, nervous. Mm -hmm. You know, at times. Because, I mean, if he asked for someone to speak to him. Because he couldn't speak, right? And to have Aaron there. Man, mm -hmm. I just believe that God is saying. No matter what I send you to do. What I call you for. Where I lead you. I'm going to provide everything. Mm -hmm. Just like he provided Moses with Aaron. He's going to provide everything. He provides the words. He just does it all. And I hope that this word encouraged um, everyone here. Because really, um, I just felt like there was a, a wake-up call. That even when you see um, 
darkness and you when you see god is dealing with that because the way the 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 word of god says it he's dealing with the darkness yeah we might not we might not believe it and we don't have to see it but we know it we know we know deep down inside god is dealing with the darkness and that's everywhere whether it's surrounding us or whether it's in our cities god is doing it that's the trust that we have because it says if he did it once before he's gonna do it again and again and again thank you lord again mm. and again and again yes. thank you lord nothing Spirit. can go against the power of god and so mm -hmm. trust that god who has called you will take you will lead you will prepare you and he will do it so long as we are like moses obedient and yielding to him in all of it thank you thank you There's, um, I really feel it in my spirit. Thank you, Pastor. I really do feel it in my spirit. That um, God wants to say something. Yes. Very deep. If we could take a moment to be in his presence, if you want to come up to the altar, it's open. Because I really felt it even from early this morning before walking into this place. Yes. That God is saying, you know, you are my daughter. You are my son. You are my daughter. You know. Prepare you. So everyone who wants to come to the altar, you're more than welcome to. Amen. God doesn't turn away anyone. At times it's hard to push him away. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, I thank you. Lord, as you deliver us, you that you talk to your daughters, Lord. There is nothing so difficult that God won't do. There is nothing so difficult that God has not already taken care of it. I hear the Lord saying, trust, 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 trust. It is my process, not a process. Because the world.